like to kind of start things with a few statistics because sometimes I think as small business owners, we need to be reminded what kind of impact that we have in the marketplace and uh, how we're represented in the marketplace. So just a few statistics. 99.7% of U.S. employee firms are made up of small businesses. So that means that we're putting, that I mean, you know, we, we're ruling the world, right? We're ruling the marketplace and the economy of of the world because we're employing people, we're putting things back into the uh, back into the marketplace and back into our own businesses. So we actually make up uh, at least 99.7 percent of U.S. employers. 78.5 percent of those small businesses are considered non-employer. Non-employers meaning you're in business for yourself, but you, but you don't necessarily obviously have employees yet. But the statistic that gets me every time though is the 90 percent. 90% of small businesses are projected to be working out of compliance. And that's one of the things why I came into the marketplace with my corporate HR skills into the entrepreneur and small business community because I want to help reduce that number. 90% is pretty high for small businesses to be out of compliance, out of compliance with maybe how you're hiring your team, out of compliance with the kind of processes or systems that you have in place, out of compliance because you've terminated someone incorrectly, and then that comes back to bite you, or you're working people out of misclassification. That is a huge thing when it comes to out of compliance because you may have contractors that should be employees, or people that you think are employees can actually probably and should be contractors. But the, other, but the misclassification goes more with the former, where the contractors are being worked as employees because you're trying to, you know, some small businesses may be trying to skirt around some employment practices, but that can come back to bite you. And of course, as a corporate size, you know, employer, they can kind of cushion that blow because they're bigger, you know, they're bigger, um, you know, numbers of teams and employees and everything. But with a small business, if you're operating 90% uh, out of compliance, then that can hurt you a little bit quicker than if you were a corporate size. So let's talk about talent management first. You know, that's your team, right? How many of you all, uh, everybody in here already has employees, right? What kind of team, whether it's employees or contract workers, right? That's part of your business. So when do you know it's time to hire? Let's talk about five, that's a long list of them. I pulled out five to keep in mind, which those five really can go be added to this list, right? So when do you know it's time to hire? <clears throat> You're losing valuable time on things that are not revenue generating because you're the admin, or you're the marketer, or you're, you know, the person that you have is not working out, so you're taking over what they're doing, you know, in, in, in the job, exactly. You know, so that's number one. Customer service is suffering. See, now your customers are noticing. They're just like, what's going on over there in Felicia's office? What's, you know, what's going on over there in whatever the names of your business is? What's going on over there? Because the last time, you know, we, we were getting great customer service six months ago, but something has changed because our orders, you know, are, you know, three weeks late when they're usually right on time when they said it's going to get here. Or, you know, their, their communications on the phone has been rude lately. Something is going on over there that wasn't happening three months or six months ago. So now your customer service is suffering and your customers are noticing. And, you know, customers can, you know, start talking, right, to each other even if you don't believe that those customers know each other. You know, the word gets out in the street, as they say, right? So, that's number two. Number three, and I actually have put these in the notes because I don't like the crowd uh, PowerPoints. So if you want to take notes, you take notes. And then you also have a, a handout, too, that when I get to that, you'll be able to fill that out, too. Your staff is overworked. That's not in my job description. You start hearing that more often. When your staff is overworked, they're feeling stressed out, or they're calling out more. It's like, uh, I'm feeling sick today, I need to you know, take the day off. Where it could be an employee who may have never take, taken a day off before, but all of a sudden, they're sick. All of a sudden, they start missing days. or All of a sudden, they start coming in late. So now, your employees are overworked. They don't necessarily want to take on the work of the, you know, the, the two or three people that hadn't been hired yet that should be part of the staff to take up the slack. The fourth one, when hiring additional staff members can certainly help you tackle current ones, but if your budget doesn't accommodate it, then you're gonna be stressing yourself self out even more. So you have to make sure that your budget is in alignment with what you need 
and be able to balance it out. Maybe you need three people, but maybe your budget only says one right now. And then you build on that as you, gain, as you uh, put more into your budget. Number five, if you are pitching in too much to get things done, which alludes to what Alicia was saying, you're working more in your business than on your business. So you're just supposed to be guiding the ship. You're the one supposed to have the strategic, you know, the big picture vision, but you're so uh, bogged down in the minutia of the thing in your business that that is when you know that it's time to hire. 